Hey guys, welcome back. Candace here. On today's episode, we're going to jump in and work on this Benjamina ficus and then also the Brazilian rain tree. Um, so this is a Benjamina ficus. It is taken from, it was a cutting taken from the mother tree. Um, and very obviously it's being developed as a literati style. So with a literati style, we think tall, elongated, elegant, and sparse. Um, so this tree is definitely ready for a little bit of a prune to continue to develop it. And also I want to jump in and just accelerate some of the wound healing that we have from some previous cuts. So let's start with that. Phone, it's probably a telemarketer wondering about my Medicare or the AARP. As I suspected, Medicare benefits enrollment. I swear they call like 22 times a day. Um, but let's get in and let's look at some of the wounds and where they're at right now. As you can see here with this wound, it is knuckling over quite nice on this edge, but I need to reduce this side here to help ease that knuckling over. Um, we have two other wounds. These were all made early season this year and healing quite nicely. We have this one here, which doesn't look like it's going to need any help. I wouldn't consider it stalled because of the amount of wound healing that it has done. And we had left on purpose this branch and this growth here to help pull energy to this area to assist in that wound healing. Now, if we go down, we can see that there is another wound low on this trunk here. Again, it looks like it's knuckling over without any issue. I might just clean up the edge right here a little bit. But even though this was a much smaller wound, we can see that this one is healing a lot more rapid. And there is, where are we? Reorientate, find it. And then we have another wound right here. Again, this one is knuckling over just fine. I might just heal. Whoop. I might just help it on this bottom edge where it looks like it's kind of stalled here a little bit. All right, so in order to do that, we're going to go in with a little woodworking gauge, gouge, gouge. And we're going to hollow out just kind of around that edge there. So we're going to go into caffeinated mode for this portion. All right, so this wound has been re-hollowed right here, dropping that central um, dead base area to below the level of the rollover, and then re-agitated our sides back to that green tissue. What that tells the tree is that we need some tree healing to go on here, so it activates and sends all of that, um, all of the extra energy and the fluid here to assist in that rolling over and to develop that protective tissue then over the top of that area. So that's what I'm going to do now with those other pieces that I wanted to um, reactivate. All right, so we've reactivated those wounds on some of the edges so they can continue to knuckle over and then if needed dropped that dead core below that level where it had been knuckling over. So now we just need to go in and do a little bit of pruning. Um, I'm going to pull off and just remove first some of the dead twigging. Spots from previous cuts. And that's it. Fire. All right, so this piece down here leaving to continue to help to heal this wound now it's so low in the tree it's probably not going to be used at all um this one here i do like it kind of fills this space here as it travels up now it really could be this is the front or this. And that's the great thing with a round pot is you're not kind of stuck yet. So 
with both views, I actually probably want to keep this piece. Maybe it'll come off later. And then we have this one sticking straight out or back. Um, it's got way too much foliage though here. So we're going to cut out this. We're going to cut out this piece at this point. And then moving up here, then we have this here and we get a nice back bifurcation. We're just going to take it on back. travel up. We have some congestion here. We're going to take off this piece because it's right across from this piece here. We're just going to take this piece right back because we don't want anything getting really thick or long in this tree. And let's see. Let's take you back to here. And now with the Benjamina, you do want to leave foliage on the end of your cut. Um, I know some people say they can be a little bit finicky with hard cutbacks. That's true. You can't like with many of our other ficus varieties, we could hard chop this stump back, um, especially the more established that tree is. Benjaminas don't take that very well. But as long as you leave something on that branch, then I find that they actually you know, handle the pruning process and even big cut prunes very, you know, very well, as well as you just kind of respect that part of them. So that little piece is cut back. We have this coming off this way. And I think we're going to keep, no, let's see. So if this is our front, yeah, I want to cut. Do you want to take this piece off now or leave this piece? Hey, let's just do this. Let's take that piece off. All right. That part looks good. If we come along the back part of this tree, though, we have a branch coming out right here. Very, very long. We're actually just going to take it right back. If most of our foliage is supposed to be up here, we want to keep this very small, compact, and reduced on back. So this comes up. That looks good. I feel like I want to take that down a little bit. All right, so now up here, I do want to reduce this height down a little bit. And again, because this is a literati style tree, we don't want a lot of thickening. So keeping the foliage and how long we let it run. Now, if I wanted to grow this to a big tree, like the other Benjamina that we're working with, um, then I would allow this to 
kind of probably elongate more to thicken. That looks good. So interestingly enough, this was a tree that actually didn't mind the par level. With the TSW 2000 light, which I have since learned that the amount of par that that was putting off, there's probably not going to be very many plants that would be very happy with that. Primarily, it's going to be marijuana growers um, is what that par is intended for which when they sent me all of the marijuana stickers when I had ordered it, that should have been my first clue. There. All right. So I think for now, do we actually... I think we're done with this tree. I think that's all that we really needed to do. All right, so we'll put this back in the tropical tent so it can continue to grow. And let's grab the Brazilian rain tree and have a look at that. That's a sad story. <laughs> have you ever seen a sadder Brazilian rain tree? Um, unfortunately, this tree, which does like high sun, but not to that par level that that TSW light was, um, within three days had crisped off all of its leaves. Um, very, very, very unfortunate. Um, so what I need to do today then is I need to go in and I need to cut all of these back before we stick it back into that plant room to recover. Um, it will recover better in there because they do like that height, that, um, blah, 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 blah. They do like that, um, they do like light and humidity. And these are a tree that actually in our area really do best in full sun. But the par level that that light is, is not. Now, is this tree dead? Only time shall tell. My, oops, I left Louie out. I have to go let Louie in. Okay, so my hunch is that this tree is not dead because we have all of the, the roots still intact and it wasn't there long enough to impact the main energy structure source life of the tree. I do have a big root here I wanna get out. Um, and these, the Brazilian rain tree does take very well to defoliation. What I did notice though is I had watered it and within a few days, the leaves all crisp dropped off. I have not had to rewater it since. And we know that that is because this tree is no longer transpiring and 85% of a tree's water use is going to be in the transpiration process, which we know isn't happening because all of these are completely fried. They look like nice dried <laughs> herbs <laughs> to season a turkey with. We are not going to season the turkey with the foliage of the Brazilian rain tree. But I'm gonna go into caffeinated mode. Now we do already have some budding coming out on some of these leaves. So at this point, really all we can do is take off the dead, all of these old fronds and pray to the bonsai gods 
and apologize for the sin and hope that it refoliates. Refoliates? I don't know if that's a word. Is it an adjective? I don't know. But I'm going to go into caffeinated mode now and get that done. Okay, so now we do have the tree back to a unplanned winter silhouette. Now, like I was saying before, the Brazilian rain tree takes very, very well to defoliation. Um, a lot of people will defoliate it in the spring before going outside and do structural work at that time. And they, a lot of times, will defoliate it again coming inside. Um, because, and then they will then do their structure work because the Brazilian rain tree is near impossible to do real good structure work on when it is in full leaf because those little leaflet clusters are so compact and you're working around, you know, thorns, which is why I couldn't defoliate this tree like a maple and just take a, and like, or I, yeah, I'd be bloody. I'd be bleeding. Um, so because we didn't have any harm or issue occur with our roots, that's why I'm fairly confident that this tree will leaf back without any issues because the damage was to the leaves. They just dehydrated and fried. They're very tender little leaflets. Um, but we didn't have any huge impact on what was actually going on in the soil. Now, what this tree type, the Brazilian rain tree, does not take well to is actually the repotting process. Um, so re root reduction and repotting, um, these guys are slow to bounce back. They, they do, um, but just something to keep in mind. So what a lot of people who are developing Brazilian rain trees for bonsai will do is if it's a year that they are going to be repotting it, um, when they sit down to start doing that repot, what they will first do is go in and manually defoliate the tree. Um, because if you don't manually defoliate it at that time, it's actually going to self defoliate itself. <laughs> um, and it can, you know, it can take four to six months after a repotting with these Brazilian rain trees for it to fully recover and resume that same kind of rate of growth that it was doing before. So since we are lucky, unluckily lucky, to now have this tree back in the winter silhouette, we can go in and do a little bit of structure work on this because if it has indeed, for some reason, super died, this work isn't going to harm it if it's already dead. Um, but like I said, I, I don't suspect that that's going to be the case with this tree. Um, we might lose some of the newer little branches and the kind of templates that maybe got a little too dehydrated also. Um, but as a whole, I don't think we're going to lose much with this tree. I do want to go in with my ironwood pruners though, and I do want to clean up. And their wood is extremely hard. Um, they also do die back to the next node, so we left our trunk cuts a little bit long, and we're going to go in and just shorten some of these up right now. And I think I might go in just a little bit more with my kind of flush cutters and clean this up just a little bit here. All right. And because we had repotted it this year, we don't really have a whole bunch of structure work to do on it because we didn't get that massive exponential growth during the summer season. Um, it was starting to down in that tropical room. But let's see. Let's do the. He should be good for the job. So. I 
think I just want to take back probably the top a little bit. That looks good. Clean up some of these old cuts back to where that area has died because we always leave that longer stub stump on these guys. I'm actually pretty pleased with where the structure is going in this tree. Um, we were just kind of starting to work on some of the ramification within. Let's bring you back. So we are done with the Brazilian rain tree for today then. It's going to go back into the tropical room and I will do a update then. I see one little dead spot here. Um, it shouldn't take too long to see if this tree is going to recover or if it is going to hasten to obvious permanent death. Um, so it's going to go back into the tropical room and only time will tell. But anyways, I have to get ready for work and I hope you guys are having fun. Have fun with your bonsai. As always, have a great day. Um, if you have any questions or topics, things you want me to hit as we move into winter here, um, drop them down into the comments. Um, as always, you can always email me also. Um, email is cc, M as in mouse, S-O, the number 12, at yahoo.com and just put bonsai in the subject line. Um, all of the winners from the subscription giveaway went to the mail last, this last, I don't know, day before Thanksgiving. Um, so do be on the lookout for that with the exception of the fifth place. I think it was Percy. Yeah. Anyways, I emailed and I never got a response still. So I re-emailed and I will get what you choose into the mail if I hear from you. All right.